Welcome back. Uh, time to look at the uh, details of the stories and take analysis from them. Uh, I, I'm glad to see we have joining us uh, Chris Kane, the Wando, who is Executive Director of the African Governance and Leadership Initiative. Um, uh, Mr. Wando, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. All right, fantastic. This is Lagos. This is Lagos. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> you were meant to be with us uh, stuck in traffic here. It's quite understandable. Um, but hoping you will still come so we can see you right here in the studio. But um, the, the feud between the NNPC and CBN has been, you know, nothing short of embarrassing. Um, now we hear that the presidency is wading into this uh, whole feud regarding do dollar remittances. That's the, the big one on the front page of the Daily Trust. Um, if you recall, the, N the CBN governor um, and the former presidential aspirant of the All Progressives Congress, um, Gordon Mayfield, had said that the reason the Naira is uh, performing poorly is because CBN had failed to remit its dollar proceeds into the account, only for the CBN to come up and show, you know, documents indicating they've been sending in money for six months now. Uh, so what are your thoughts on this, this move by the presidency? Well, to me, I, I would just know whether I would say it's coming too late um, or it's coming early. Um, but for the federal government to have allowed this to have traded for such a long time is very embarrassing. Um, that the NNPC is not remitting dollars uh, into the CBN account uh, is, to me, is very embarrassing. But this is not new. You've known that um, the NNPC is now uh, more around uh, NNPC as it were. Uh, um, over the years, have been so consistent in his uh, approach to remitting funds to the uh, to the Federation account. And there have been so many instances where ministers of finance, CBN governors, and so many others have complained. Even the, even the governors of the various states have uh, very many uh, complained about this. And um, to also understand that for several years, the account of the NNPC was not audited. That in itself is enough to show you the kind of fraud uh, within the NNPC and the Ministry of uh, Petroleum Resources. Um, uh, for it to take the, the uh, a call by the Central Bank uh, to call out to the NNPC for the uh, federal government to weigh in into this uh, problem to me is uh, laughable. But on the other side and the other leg for me, is the allegation that is, that is really one of the reasons why uh, the Naira is jumping, uh, um, galloping um, uh, to where, where we are. As of, as of last week, I was, um, a, about 710 Naira is taken for uh, a, a dollar. Uh, to me, it's not that here nor there for me, because it's obvious that the NNP system, the CBA, and the Governor Central Bank has lost all initiative to be able to checkmate this uh, downward trade and a high rise uh, in Naira compared to the uh, dollar. Don't forget it's this MCBA that came up to say that the problem we had was a uh, Abuki effect. If you remember vividly, that the CBA said this some time ago, and that said that that um, uh, web page uh, should be brought down, and that happened. At the point again, he started to keep the entire uh, blaming the uh, the bureau de charge um, companies, PDCs, that they were raising for this. Now they are shifting the blame to NNPC. I don't really know what is what is going on, but it's quite unfortunate that we are having serious economic issues, especially when it relates to this. A few days ago, the Emirates issued a statement that one that they are going to reduce the number of flights coming to Nigeria from 11 to 7 because they cannot remit over $85 million ticket sales that were made in Nigeria to their country. That is how bad the situation is. Hmm. And this, of course, uh, is going to be really, really bad for um, uh, uh, investment in Nigeria and, of course, for uh, you have um, foreign direct investment and for the economy as a whole. In a time when we're trying to see how we can fix the economy, the economy itself is also now <laughs> destroying the, the economy. I mean, it's, it's really scary. And uh, the signals, like you've said, you know, it's, uh, it's going to send signals to the entire investment and business world that their money will be trapped it, in Nigeria. It is, because let yeah. me tell you, let me tell you, a lot of industries are dying. 
Companies cannot do companies that rely on certain um, uh, 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 what is it, equipment or whatever in terms of transportation cannot even. So many companies are completely closing down. Most of them have the money, but they can't get the dollar to buy. They can't. And that is the problem we're having. We've said this time and time again, when we start having the issue of uh, um, this importation of petroleum products and the rest of them, and we say that if you get to a point where yeah, we cannot even do it. Let me give you a classical example. Um, as of last week, the, uh, the uh, uh, what is it called now? The uh, what, I said account. The, the Minister of Finance told us that S, uh, uh, SS Code account has been depleted to just three hundred thousand dollars, uh, three hundred thousand about uh, three hundred thousand dollars. When this government came uh, into place in 2015, it was about two billion, two billion dollars. When Obasanjo was living, it was close to twenty billion dollars. Now you are talking just less than one million dollars, about a quarter, a quarter of uh, a quarter of a third uh, of one million dollars. That is what we have in our SS through accounts. That means that even the state practically have nothing to have nothing to share again, because <laughs> there are so many companies that have more than three hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. We are talking of a country having less than three hundred thousand. Is a SS good account that shows you the level and the problem we are in currently. Our students that are schooling abroad are finding where parents are finding it difficult to send money to them to pay their school fees. They don't have transactions to do. I find it. In fact, if you have gotten so bad, there are some banks, if even your card, you cannot be able to transfer or make any purchase up to $50 with your card. That is how bad it is. If you are traveling now and you go to the bank, to get um, um, dollars, you will be on the queue, you'll be asked to um, apply online, and it will take you about three, four weeks. Even if you will not get it, you will start traveled before they, they even find something for you. So that is how terrible and uh, how bad the situation is. Hmm. And indeed, uh, I, I, and one of my, uh, my banks, uh, I think a week or two ago, sent me a, a flash message to say that um, they've suspended uh, you know, withdrawals, dollar withdrawals, or foreign use of. Um, uh, a Naira ATM card, Naira debit card. Kofi, let me just tell you this. I <laughs> am a practical example. Yeah. Just about few, uh, about two weeks ago, I qualified um, as a chartered arbitrator in the uh, UK. I qualified as a chartered arbitrator. I was asked to pay my membership fee in pounds. It's like about, just about seven, everything is about, seven, uh, about uh, 75 uh, pounds. Kofi, do you know that all my cards that I have, I, I couldn't transfer that money. I couldn't transfer that money just for 75 pounds to pay for my membership. I have to call somebody in UK to make the payment for me. That is how terrible it is. Mere 75 pounds, I cannot make a transfer to pay for my professional fee. It's sad, it's sad. Um, and of course, it means that there will be an economic slowdown. Uh, I, I, I've been thinking about this, Chris, and. Um, I remember, I recall, if you recall too as well, that um, uh, the, the protests in, in, in Sri Lanka, you know, were hastened by the fact that people could not find a U.S. dollar in the country. They ran out of dollars, ran out of foreign mm -hmm. currency. It's true. Mm. It is. In Sri Lanka. We are even talking about, listen, we are talking about dollar now. The way we are going, I can tell you that people will start protesting even for bread. Bread prices have got out several uh, governments in most countries. The prices of bread, uh, average bread, has risen to about 1,000 naira a loaf. I'm sure you're aware of that, Kofi. That's sliced that bread. <laughs> yes. No, not a gigi bread, though. <laughs> no, I guess you know which one. I, I said that. <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know you like a gigi bread and they are going. I know uh, you that know, you know. Yes. I'm, not talking, I'm talking of average bread. That is a stable food in Nigeria. But see, the price of tuba of Miam has moved to close to 3,000 Naira, just a tuba, one, one tuba. That is locally produced. So when people are still talking about what you say, oh, it's people that are not the national, even locally, people are finding it much more difficult to even eat now. Even the plant checkers, how much the paint of, uh, of this is. 
We cannot say you know they go market, so you might not even know some of these things. Some of us are don't don't be too sure. sure. <laughs> don't be too <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. L l let's let's move on. Um, whilst we're looking at uh, the CBN and NNPC as trying to uh, agree on who is who is who is telling the truth and who is not, um, ASU held a meeting on Sunday and of course uh, came out with a decision by the NEC to extend their strike by a further four weeks, starting um, a minute after midnight yesterday, Monday. Four weeks strike, and they say they want to give the federal government time uh, to consider negotiating and implementing the agreement that ASU has and all that. Um, you think uh, this would, four weeks would lead to something different from what we've been seeing for the last uh, few months since uh, February 2022? Well, we spoke about this about two weeks ago. Um, I told you that I don't want to be a prophet of doom. But I told you um, uh, accurately that the two-week ultimatum given by the president for the Minister of Education to sort out the issue with LASU, I mean, with ASU, will not come through, we, we, uh, we, it will not come to um, uh, a conclusive, um, uh, uh, conclusive uh, to a conclusion because I know that that two week ultimatum is not possible. If you are not able to solve a problem for years, how come that you're able to do that uh, within two weeks? How did that two weeks last? It definitely must have lasted. We have not heard from the Minister of Education, we have not heard from the Presidency, we have not heard from anybody on the directive given by the President. If the President gave a two-week ultimatum, and after two weeks, and he was supposed to give an extension, he will come out to tell Nigeria and say, okay, this is the report I've gotten from the, the Minister, this is where we are, can we still give them another few weeks to be able to do it? Nobody is talking until ASU came out and said that um, they are giving uh, another four-week extension, one month. But don't forget that also this government in the past have also raised, raised similar um, uh, committees. That was one headed by the chief of staff to the president, Professor Gambari himself. And they were given a certain ultimatum to be able to get this sorted. Nothing happened to that uh, report. The report didn't come out. Uh, the president kept quiet on it. Professor Gambari on, the, on his own didn't come out to tell us what, how far they went with the negotiation and the rest of them. Now, ASU have given an extra foremost. These students have practically lost about uh, 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 going to two sessions because the last time they lost about nine months close to a year. Now this started there about February and there about when you know, that means another six months have been lost and everybody's behaving still not happening. Why these students continue to stay at home and their future be mortgaged? Also this also is affecting them because most of the students that um, participated in JAM, about, I think they are about, maybe I, I want to think about, I think, I think they are about two sets now, cannot gain admission to the university. So what is happening? Nobody is saying anything. Nobody is negotiating with ASU. ASU seems to be on his own. The government said they will find a solution to it. And practically just that they have pushed forward every other negotiation as they have to do with um, uh, um, um, oil subsidy and so I will tell you for free that this government will continue to push this narrative until this next year. And that is where we are heading to. Because this government has barely how many months, about eight months or thereabouts, to, we, we have about, um, about six months to the election in February. And after election, the government is practically on its way out. So, but the fact remains that those in charge are not doing anything about it. But on a daily basis, you see on social media, we are ministers, we are governors, we are legislators, our senators, House of Rep members, and even members of the state house that go abroad, go to um, go to the convocation of their children, and post these this things online. All right. Uh, uh, very, very sad one indeed, uh, Chris Kendiwando. I would have wanted us to stick with the daily but we have... Uh, limited time, so let's move on to the punch. Uh, the big one there, the punch is uh, devoting its, uh, its, its banner uh, headline to um, uh, coverage of the planned attacks. You know, the NSCDC warning uh, as terrorists infiltrate south. The paper says uh, the police is strategizing. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, we told the Lagos Commissioner of Police, Area tac and Tactical Commanders held an emergency meeting and have called for vigilance. The uh, FRC is declaring war on unregistered motorcycles, you know, Arewa youth are demanding the NSA's 
uh, sacking. So what are your thoughts on the ongoing situation with this NSCDC uh, frequent uh, security reports in recent times? The world will give reports. Uh, NSCDC will give reports. DSS also came out with their own reports. Police uh, also a few days ago issued statements, uh, especially within the report in Lagos. And we have personally and prior to for this report. What I want to see is concrete actions. What I'm, I'm trying to, I want to see is we doing the needful. Just a few days ago, just about within the last 20, uh, 24 hours or 48 hours, a family of six were killed in Jaws. Okay? A family of six, six family of six were eliminated in Jaws. People just went to their home and killed them. I, was, I, I, I learned that additional two were also killed, making it a total of eight. Jaws used to be one of the safest cities in Nigeria. In fact, it has always been, when we are growing up, the, 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 we have always had that nostalgic feeling to go to Jaws because of the story we are having, hearing about Jaws. Oh, if you can't go to London, you can't go to America, just go to Jaws, it's the same weather and the rest of it. Jaws used to be one of the most peaceful cities in, in Nigeria. But now, what do we have? Now, there have been instances where we are getting reports that Boko Haram have taken over practically all the forests within the southwest. The, um, uh, the leader of OPC came out three days ago to give a dummy report on that. And there have been consistent reports coming in from the various agencies of government that something that may, uh, may happen within the southwest. Three days ago also, a leader of Boko Haram was arrested in Abeokuta in Ogun State, where he disguised as a security man I was using that opportunity to, to gather intelligence. So we are in real deep problem. What we thought was just limited to North East, North West, and North Central, and that moves down to every part of the country and is about to take foot in the Southwest. What I can only say is that let us be as vigilant as we can be. The security agencies will always continue to assure us that things are being done, but on the daily basis, they continue raising um, um, uh, this security alert. You saw what happened in Abuja a few days ago. We are about eight soldiers were killed in Buhari area of Abuja, which is in the heart in the heart of Abuja. We just prison was attacked, and prisoners were allowed to go. Most notorious leaders of Boko Haram made their way out of this. None have been arrested so far. So that is the problem we are having, and we continue to get all this security. The security report for me, people, you should make people to panic. I personally would just advise the security agencies to just do their work without necessarily raising the, hypertension, raising the tension and trying to raise um, uh, uh, some kind of hypertension among the people. Because the more you give this report, then there's a possibility that people will start getting afraid and all sorts of manner of things will just continue to happen. So I would rather say, let them do their due diligence. That is what is called serious intel. They then do the, 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 their intelligence gadgets and make sure that these people uh, are arrested and this issue of attack are nipped in the board before it happens. You saw what happened in our war. They had to move into a church and kill several people and just less than a week or two after, they attack the same war again. Hmm. All right. Uh, uh, Chris Kendo, we we'll will have to leave it at that. Um, uh, and uh, your interest analysis, I mean, the headlines don't give too much chair, uh, but you've done justice to each and every one that we've raised for you to comment on so far. I want to thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. Do have a nice day ahead. All right, all right. All right, uh, that's uh, the uh, of the press segment on the breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa. We'll be back to talk breastfeeding. Quite interesting to look at such a topic on a beautiful day. It's World Breastfeeding Week. Stay with us.